If you have a Kenmore Elite refrigerator and on the LED display, you're seeing this error, ERDH. In this video, I'll show you how to fix it. Now, when you get an error on the LED display, the buttons are not responsive. Now, if you look up the DH error, it tells you the defrost sensor didn't reach 46 degrees Fahrenheit or 8 degrees Celsius within one hour after starting defrost. And with this problem, it can be caused by three things. One is a defective defrost thermostat, which also has a fuse on it. The other one is a defective defrost heater. And thirdly, it can be a defective main control board. Now, before I take apart the freezer drawer, what I'd like to do is confirm that the main board is working. So what we'll need to do is pull this fridge forward and open up the back panel and remove an access panel at the back and test the control board to make sure it's sending voltage to the heating element. Here you see I pull the fridge forward. Next, disconnect the power cable. Disconnect the power. Looking at the back of the fridge, there's an access panel right here. Go ahead and remove the three Phillips screws. And here's a look at the main controller board. And you'll notice right here, there's a switch you can press and this will allow the fridge to go into test mode. Next, you need a multimeter and set it to the AC voltage measurement. On the control board, you want to probe the output to the heating element. Now, as to which wire you need to test for the output to the heating element, try to search on the internet the surface manual for your refrigerator. Here's the surface manual for the fridge I have. And on this page, you can see the defrost heater output voltage is measured on connector 2, pin 1, and connector 1, pin 1. And if it's working, you'll see 115 volt AC. And looking at the main board of this diagram, you see connector one, pin one is here. Connector two, pin one is here. And these two wires will allow you to measure the voltage to the heating element. And on this board, the output is on pin one of connector two and pin one of connector one. Now be very careful. The output of this is 115 volt AC. So make sure don't touch a probe so you won't get electrocuted. Now to do the test, you will have to plug the power back in. With the power cord plugged in, the fault code will clear, and now the display looks normal. Press the switch once to enter test mode. And the display will look like this. With the switch pressed once, right now we're in the test mode number one. And in test mode number one, the output to the heating element is off. So we're not gonna get the 115 volt we're looking for. And the multimeter shows it's only outputting 37 volt AC. I'm gonna press the switch one more time to get into test mode number two. Now in test mode number two, the output is still off. So right now it's showing 37 volt AC only. And the front panel shows 2222. Now I'll press the switch one more time to go into test mode number three. And the front panel shows 3333 for test mode number three. With the main board in test mode number three, let's look at the multimeter. I am getting 120 volt AC, so that's good. That tells me the main board is outputting the voltage I need for the heating element. Now, if you're not getting any voltage, you will need to replace the main board. Also, when we exit the test mode, you want to see that the output voltage is turned off. If it stays on at 120 volt AC, then the main board will need to be replaced also. And to exit the test mode, press the switch one more time. And here you can see the multimeter drop to 24 volt AC. So now I've confirmed this main board is working properly. Go ahead and close this up. Pull the top tray out. Press in the two tabs on the side here to release. Now you can remove this rack. Push these rails back in. Now on the side of this rail, there's a Phillips screw you need to remove, which I've done already. Now you can lift the front door up. Now remove the door. Push the sliders back in. Next, we remove the top track here. It's held in by two Phillips screws right here. Do the same thing for the other side. Pull the bottom track out. On the right side, use a flathead screwdriver and pop the gear off. Now you can remove this, push the slider back in. Now you can remove the side rail. It's held in by three Phillips screws, one, two, and three. Do the same thing on this side.
With this access door, use a putty knife and remove this panel. Since this fridge has an ice maker, go ahead and release this panel. There's one flip screw you need to remove at the bottom. Now carefully pull this panel off. I'm going to go ahead and remove the ice maker. It's held in by three Phillips screws right here. Go ahead and disconnect this connector. Now we can remove this panel right here. Don't forget to disconnect the fan. Now as you can see, without the defrost working, the evaporator is frozen. Right here you're looking at the evaporator coil. On the right side here, this is a defrost sensor. And right here is a fuse. Go ahead and cut off the tie wrap you see right there. Carefully remove the thermistor. And the fuse. Disconnect the connector. Now this other connector you see here goes to a heating element that's at the bottom of the evaporator. Now while you're here, you can test if the heating element is good by connecting a multimeter and measuring the resistance of the two wires. A good working heating element should measure 34 to 42 ohms. Right now it's measuring 36 ohm, so I know the heating element is good. Here's a look at this thermistor fuse assembly, the one on the orange wire. This is the thermistor, and this piece behind this foil is the fuse. Now according to the service manual, when a thermistor is at freezing temperature, it should measure around 30 kilo ohm, and the fuse is closed, so zero ohm. So next I'll use a multimeter and show you how to test this. You can also test the temperature sensor by putting it in ice water. When the temperature drops to zero degrees Fahrenheit, the resistance on this thermistor should measure 30 kilo ohm. The thermistor measures about 19 kilo ohm. Now it should be about 30 kilo ohm, so it's a little bit low. Let's now measure the fuse and the fuse measures 3.5 mega ohm. The fuse should be zero ohm, but it's wide open. So looking at the measurement, it looks like the fuse is bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this thermostat fuse wiring harness. The part number of the thermostat for this fridge is 6615JB2005H. Here's a replacement, brand new thermostat. And I actually place this in a freezer so we can do a measurement. If I measure the two orange wires, It measures 39 kilo ohm. And if I measure the fuse, it's zero ohm. So let's go ahead and install a new one. Here's the new thermistor. I'll route it the same way that came out. Put a couple of tie wraps to hold the wire in place. Now you can reassemble everything. Reconnect the fan. Reinstall the ice maker. We install the top sliding rail. We install the bottom sliding rail. Do the same thing on the inside. Now slide the bottom rails out. And to reinstall this rod, what you want to do is actually push the left side in a little bit so it's not straight across and it's a little bit angled. Put this rod in on the left side with the rod angled. Now you can straighten this out and pop the gear towards the outside like that. Pull out the top sliders, reinstall this basket.
and on both sides it snaps right back in now for the bottom drawer slide this out now you can place the door back on now keep an eye on each side of this rail here there's a hook here this hook need to slide on the inside hole that you see right here and there's one on each side so again this hook you see here will slide into the slot don't forget to reinstall the screw on the side reinstall the basket this ice box reinstall this top rack Last thing is to plug the power back in. The front display will reset and let the fridge run for a good day. If you don't see the error message come up, then it's fixed. So it's been over a week since doing the repair and the error code has not returned. So the problem has been fixed. If you're having a similar problem with your Kenmore refrigerator, I hope you found this video to be helpful. For a list of parts and tools used in this video, check out the link below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. To support this channel, remember to click on thumbs up subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you get notified of new videos.